Okay, welcome back, friends. I am Dr. K. M. Raza. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about syringomyelia. What is the syringomyelia? Syringomyelia is basically, you know, formation of a cavity as syrinx. You have to focus here, please, on this structure. Look, uh, this is basically, you know, uh, MRI. Here you can see the uh, cervical vertebral bodies, intervertebral discs. But you must have to focus on this, you know, yellow arrows. So this is a cavity. This is a syrinx. This is a cavity syrinx, which is basically you know growing within the spinal cord. Here you can see this is your cerebellum, and here is displacement of cerebellar tonsils also that we have discussed in cherry one defect. So what is basically concept of you know this uh, syringomyelia? That syringomyelia is basically formation of the syrinx cavity that grows within the spinal cord, and then it's also associated with cherry one defect. Cherry one defect. That is posterior fossa malformation. Uh, there is displacement of you know this. You can see this is cerebellum, and this is cerebellar tonsils here. So cerebellar tonsil displacement through the foramen magnum. So it's also associated with cherry type one defect. What is basically you know complication uh, or what will be the clinical presentation of your patient with you know syringomyelia? To understand clinical presentation, first we have to understand this structure. You can see this is the transverse section of the spinal cord. Do focus here, please. This is the transverse section of the spinal cord. Here you can see the dorsal column. Yes, dorsal column. This posterior column. Here you can see your lateral column. Here you can see your anterior column. Now inside you can see this H-shaped structure. This H-shaped structure. If you know that this, you know, gray matter of the spinal cord. So spinal cord uh, basically, you know, it's um, carrying all the sensations like uh, pain, temperature through the lateral spinal thalamic tract, vibration, proprioception, stereognosis, touch. Through this dorsal column to your thalamus and from thalamus to your cortex, and then in the spinal cord you have got you know in this white matter you have got uh, the axons, the tracts like pyramidal tract, corticospinal tract. So there is lot in this structure, but in this case, which part of the spinal cord function is impaired? This is important. So syringomyelia are usually going to basically, you know, block this channel. Here is the syrinx. So this channel, what is the significance of this channel? This is a highly trafficking area, highly trafficking area, especially for, you know, spinothalamic tract. So what is the function of spinothalamic tract? That spinothalamic tract is carrying pain and temperature sensation. To your thalamus, to the VPL thalamus, and to your cortex. Suppose I am touching uh, this, you know, uh, screen, and I am feeling the temperature. It means this high temperature is entering into my spinal cord to the dorsal root ganglia. Yes, here you can see this dorsal root ganglia, and then through the dorsal root ganglia, it's going to enter to the spinal cord. You can see, and then it's crossing to the opposite side. So this is a crossing point here. This is called as anterior white commissure. So from other side of the body, pain and temperature sensation through the first order neuron, it's entering to the spinal cord, then crossing to the opposite side, and then it ascending contralaterally. So you have to understand that this part, this junction here, the junction of the anterior white commissure here, this junction, this is very important junction here because at this junction. Both you know neurons, both neurons of the spinothalamic tract. These are called as second order neuron in the spinal cord. They usually basically cross right to the left side, left to the right side. So this is a crossing point. So this is a crossing point. This is a crossing point. So this is a point basically compressed by these syrinx here. So it means that syringomyelia syrinx, the cavity is going to block the anterior white commissure in the spinal cord and this anterior white commissure is important junction it's important crossing point it's the trafficking area for the second order neuron of the spinothalamic tract which carry pain and temperature sensation so that's why if anyone is having you know this cavity or the syrinx usually you can see this cavity is growing usually in the cervical part of the spinal cord so cervical part of the spinal cord is giving you know important branches, important nerves which usually you know take the pain temperature sensations from this part of your body, from your upper body. You can see in this picture from upper body. 
so it mean if this cavity is growing in this first part of the spinal cord and it's blocking the anterior white commissure here it's going to block the pain and temperature sensation bilateral not the unilateral in the brown sequard syndrome that is the hemisection of the spinal cord that is half of the spinal cord function is impaired but you know in syringomyelia because it's blocking the anterior white commissure so it's mean it's blocking both you know both sided pain and temperature so that's why people with the syringomyelia if the syrinx is growing in this upper part cervical part of the spinal cord where you have basically origin of the brachial plexus it means you have got weak pain and temperature sensations bilateral bilateral in this part in this part in this part so bilateral loss of pain and temperature sensation it means your cavity your syrinx is blocking blocking basically the second order neuron of the spinothalamic tract within the spinal cord and then another you know important point you have to note here that if this cavity is growing more on the anterior side so you can see on this structure here this is the ventral horn of the spinal cord and on the ventral horn of the spinal cord you have got second order neuron lower motor neuron of the pyramidal tract which help in you know movement of the uh, you know the skeletal muscles the voluntary movements so it means that massive cavity massive syrinx can also lead to blockage of lower motor neuron so people will not have only problem of the loss of sensation of the pain and temperature but in advanced stages they do may complain you know lower motor neuron problem also i hope you understood you again have to revise this lecture do make your notes and do watch the lectures on the tracks it will help you to understand the first order neuron and the second order neuron of the spinothalamic tract thank you for your consideration thank you